Venom The Last Dance has now made its way into theaters. I had a chance to check it out. The end to the Venom trilogy. Was this thing worth it? Worth getting Madam Web, Morbius, and the rest of this spunk Spider-Man-less universe? Let's talk about it. Hi, my name is Zach, and I started this YouTube channel because I cannot watch a movie without having to talk about it afterwards. If you guys feel the same way, you're in the right place. Consider hitting that subscribe button. While you're at it, I want this to be a conversation, so definitely drop your comments down below on what you thought of Venom The Last Dance. If you've seen it, and if you haven't seen it, what are you thinking about it? Are you going to check it out this weekend? So, for me, going into this movie... I have not been the biggest fan of the previous Venom movies. I don't really like the first one. I didn't really connect with its vibe. And the second one, while I did connect a little bit more with the humor, had a little bit more fun with the concept, I'm still not the biggest fan of it. So definitely take that into consideration when going into Venom The Last Dance. But the difference with Venom The Last Dance for me compared to the rest of this franchise was I was really into the trailers. I thought the trailers really dove into the action, the scope, the whole finality part of this trilogy and I was really buying into what the trailers were putting out. I thought the marketing for this for, was quite good and with that said going into the theater while I was cautiously optimistic I was feeling surprisingly pumped for Venom The Last Dance. So let's talk about what worked about Venom The Last Dance for me and without repeating and beating a horse on the head too much we got Venom and uh, Tom Hardy as Eddie Brock's chemistry in this thing. This has really been the driving force of this entire franchise. In fact, Tom Hardy and uh, Venom have kind of been the most watchable part for, for me of this entire franchise. And they take that relationship to a point where you do feel that they have grown as characters together. Their relationship as friends has developed over these three movies to the point that even though I'm not that big of a fan of the franchise, I was feeling pretty attached to these guys, to their camaraderie on the screen. And of course, Tom Hardy doing the voice of Venom as well as playing Eddie Brock. He does a lot to carry this entire movie. On top of that, there are some pretty fun action sequences. I, th I think the Venom franchise has always had fun action sequences, though none of them have been amazing in my mind, have been memorable, except maybe the motorcycle action sequence and the apartment beatdown that happened in the first film. Apart from that, the action in these movies have not really stuck with me. That's no different with Venom The Last Dance, I will be honest with you, but when the action was there, when the symbiote and, you know, Venom and Tom Hardy who, oh, what's happening? Why is Venom doing this to these people? When when that's all going down, it looks good enough, it's fun enough, and it's entertaining enough. And one more thing I will also give this movie is this is marketed as the finale. This is the end to the Venom trilogy. And in that, you want to feel a sense of finality. And I do feel like this movie gives you that. If you are invested into this franchise, if you love these characters... I do think there are moments in this movie that are going to hit you emotionally. Now, they didn't hit me emotionally. I was not that connected or invested into this franchise for me to get emotional. But going to the ending without giving anything away, of course, there was a sincerity and a sweetness and an authentic feeling to them saying goodbye to this trilogy, to this franchise, that did honestly feel kind of nice even though I wasn't wiping away any tears I wasn't feeling the sentimentality that I think the movie wanted me to feel and there are definitely gonna be audience members who do feel that sentimentality I wasn't feeling it but I appreciated that the movie was being aware that there are people who want that and I think they did a pretty good job of making this end of a trilogy truly feel like a finality and in some ways a pretty appropriate one if you ask me Eddie, the time has come. Tom Hardy is Venom, uh, the action, uh, the ending. Okay, there we go. Let's talk about what didn't work about Venom, the last dance. And this is kind of one of those situations where I go, how much time do you got? Because this movie is a 
mess. And it is not just a mess in the way that Madam Web was a mess, where it does have similar issues to Madam Web. ADR off screen, some really choppy editing and weird cuts, and a discombobulated, disjointed story. But where Madam Web, you can look at and be like, wow, this is terrible. I'm having kind of fun with just how terrible it is, though. For me, Venom the Last Dance was terrible in a lot of ways that Madam Web was terrible, but without the fun. And I found that the most perplexing because as much as I don't like the Venom franchise, they've always been able to have fun. And there's going to be people who have fun with this because it's all subjective. But for me, this felt like they took everything that didn't work for me about the Venom franchise and they did the worst of that. In this movie, the humor for me was very weak. I chuckled maybe a couple times, but for the most part, the biggest running gag in this movie that they have is that Tom Hardy can't hold on to his shoes. Tom Hardy just keeps losing his shoes, and it's so funny. Ha ha ha. It didn't work for me. I, I didn't find anything humorized to work in this. Even as much as I liked Venom and Eddie's banter, it felt the weakest that the pair have ever had with this movie. There's no memorable line. There's really nothing Venom or Eddie says that feels memorable to me from a dialogue standpoint. And speaking of the dialogue, this has some of the most heavy exposition hit you on the head dialogue in almost any movie this entire year it's up there with madam web but for the first like two acts of this movie every character just speaks as if they're given the audience information so that we understand the story that the movie is barely telling and what's worse is just how many characters there are in this movie there are Way too many characters, way too many subplots. Re Iphens is in this movie. No, he's not playing the lizard from The Amazing Spider-Man. He's just some hippie dude who wants to go see aliens at Area 51. There's some scientists that work at Area 51 working on symbiotes. We catch up with them. Well, in the midst of that, we've got Eddie and Venom on the run. They're fugitives like we saw at the end of Let There Be Carnage. And all of these storylines, they try to make them come together. They just don't come together in a cohesive, natural way. And worst of all, the journey to get them all together is really quite boring. I found that this movie meandered around and just... Eddie Brock wandered around looking confused, <laughs> looking like he hasn't slept in days from one location to another with really no rhyme or reason. The plot of this movie involving the new villain that they're introducing, Null, which let's talk about Null for a second here. Pointless. Absolutely pointless. This movie feels like it's trying to be a finale to the Venom trilogy as well as a prelude beginning the Null, whatever it's going to be in the Spunk universe. Null is in this thing for like 30 seconds. If you're a Null fan, he's in here for like 30 seconds. He opens the movie with an exposition dump telling you who he is, why he is, where he is. And then he's supposed to be this looming threat over the movie for the rest of it. You never really feel it. You never really feel the presence of Null. I went in knowing nothing about Null. By the end of this movie, I still feel like I know next to nothing about Null. Except that Sony is very desperate to have their own Thanos. And I felt that tremendously with Null. They are trying to make you feel like they are setting up their own Thanos. That's going to be their end game. <laughs> You laugh just thinking about it. The end game of the Man and Web, Morbius, Craven the Hunter, Sony Spider-Man less universe, which I don't believe we'll ever see. But that's why Noel is here. He really doesn't factor into the story all that much. And it was so disappointing how much I feel like Noel was pumped up in interviews and in the marketing for him to just be this like out of sight, out of mind looming threat that may come in the future and i do want to give this movie a little bit of mercy because this was a victim of the writers and actors strike the writers and actors strike it took place in the middle of venom's production so there's definitely times in this where you can feel there are additional lines added off screen or a scene will end and as they're in as they've cut to the next scene the dialogue is carrying on over the scene it was very odd to me even if the character was no longer in that scene and there's really nothing in this movie that makes 
any sense. The whole point of Null is he's sending these other symbiote monster beings that you see in the trailers. They're out to go get Venom and Eddie because they possess something that Null needs. And there really is no logical explanation as to how this thing works. I won't give it away, but basically it turns Eddie and Venom into MacGuffins for the entire movie. It just makes them very passive characters, and that to me was just very uninteresting. And I just feel like I could go on and on. It's it's the same stuff. It's the same stuff we've been saying about these Sony Marvel Spider-Man less movies. They're not. They're not. <laughs> <laughs> They're not well conceived. They're not well put together. The only thing that this has that the other movies like Morbius and Madam Web don't have is a fun-ish <laughs> performance by Tom Hardy as Venom and Eddie Brock. That is the only thing for me that makes this movie stand out from the other ones. It's got the same choppy editing. It's got the terrible characters so thin. The storyline is so thin while also trying to be too much all at once while accomplishing nothing feeling like nothing really happens even when we got to the third act of this movie it felt like the movie finally picked up but at that point it's over in 20 minutes so what good is that <laughs> look if you're if you're a fan of the venom franchise if you've liked the first one if you liked the second one there's a possibility you're gonna like this one for me personally as someone who doesn't like the first one just kind of likes the second one i thought this was the worst of the three they tried to send it out on a sentimental note i do think they did a decent job at that for people who are fans of the franchise but before you get to that last scene where they do so the rest of this is just a slog to get through i didn't find it funny the action was fine but nothing memorable i'm not gonna remember this movie by next week i'm probably never ever ever going to watch it again so for me personally with all that said it's a not recommend i can't recommend venom the last dance if this is the last venom movie like they're saying it is i bid this franchise adieu uh nice effort but not for me and now i throw it to you guys what did you think of venom the last dance dance comment down below let me know if you want to check out some more content if you like movie related content i got a bunch more right over there thank you guys as always for watching and hearing me out don't just watch movies talk movies i'll see you guys next time take care